Most, if not all of us, who perform rituals and spell work lead busy lives. During the day, we go to work or school, run errands, do housework, take care of families, take care of pets, deal with the responsibilities that we have in life. We all have stresses, worries, anxieties, regrets, angers, disappointments, and frustrations, sorrows that we face. We have our excitements, joys, pleasures, passions, involvements, hopes, dreams, and wishes. All of these different emotions and energies surround us in our day-to-day -day lives. At the same time, we are all on our own personal spiritual paths. We have taken upon ourselves to open our minds and gain more knowledge of our chosen religion and beliefs and faith systems. In our practices with rituals and spell casting, we have a knowledge and understanding of the energies we are raising and sending out. However, life does go on, and with it are the natural ups and downs that we face with our responsibilities as functioning human beings living in the world today. How is it that we can deal with a balance of these energies? How do we manage working with positive energy and focusing on our ritual energies when we've had a stressful or bad day? or even a wonderful and exciting day. How is it that we can separate and have a nice balance of our personal energy with our magical energy we are working with? Now, remember, none of these suggestions, none of these things that I'm going to be talking about need to be done. But even by just doing one thing that I'm going to suggest here, you may find that your spell and ritual work is more potent because of the little extra boost that these suggestions can add to your experience. Here at the Magical Circle School, we hold rituals online every Sabbath and every Espet. We also hold other rituals that your fellow students create for class projects and finals and just because they like to do a ritual. These rituals are usually done in the evening and where time zones can be an issue. There are things that can be done to help you ease yourself from your quote-unquote muggle to your quote-unquote magical life. As always, you know when each ritual the school is holding will be normally at least a month in advance. We have them up on the school calendar. It's mentioned in every monthly check-in. There are the reminder services reminders and the Facebook and Twitter feed notifications. So this means you have plenty of time to get materials you need for your ritual. By immediately gathering things that you need for a ritual ahead of time, you are taking away a lot of the stress and anxiety of being unprepared for a ritual. This also gives you time to change and charge any new tools that you may need. Find suitable substitutions for items that are on the list that you do not have. Give you plenty of time to contact either myself or whoever the host is of the ritual to get ideas about possible substitutions should you not be able to find something that's listed. Remember, we never allow for the statement, oh, I don't have the item, so therefore I can't do the ritual. That never flies with us. You can always substitute. You can always use creative visualization. So there's never an excuse not to do ritual with us. Waiting to the last minute will have you scrambling around to find what you need. You may find you do not have an important element for the ritual or something suitable for substitution. You may be working with tools that have an energy that might not be compatible with the work you are doing, and this can hinder the desired result. So, you have all the items you need. 
So, what? You come home from work, you get dinner, put the kids to bed, walk the dog, set up, do the ritual, right? Sure, you could do that. But what about the stress you've had from that work day? The fact that you burnt the chicken, your son dumped baby powder all over the rug, you have a test or a presentation tomorrow, you're out of toothpaste, you got cut off in traffic, the barista at Starbucks got your order and your name wrong again. What about all those stresses? All of these things affect you. They affect your emotions, your energy, and in essence, the ability to concentrate on your ritual and the magic you're working on. No, it won't make these things go away. But if you do some pre-ritual preparation, it can help you adjust from those stresses and allow them to be put aside for the time being. And this way, we can focus on what it is we are doing. There are a number of different ways that you can make this transition. The thing is that you have to take the time to do it. Make the known effort and possibly make adjustments to your schedule. I do understand that due to time limitations and schedules and things that need to be done in everyday life can cause obstacles for you. But there are always ways to work with everything. You might feel that you're unable to do these things. The rituals run at 8 p.m. Eastern Time usually. But if you live in California, if you live on the, the West Coast, this would mean that the ritual starts at 5 p.m. Pacific Time. And let's say you get home at 4.30. So that would mean you'd have to pick something to eat for the family or check the kids' homework first and do a million other things. So what you should do is list out what it is that you normally do when you get home. Is it possible to make any adjustments to these things? Is it possible to have other family members help out? Is it possible to do anything a little bit differently? Typical ritual runs about an hour. So if the ritual begins at 5 o'clock your time, it's easy to estimate that it should conclude about 6 o'clock. Now, sometimes rituals run less time. Like the shortest ritual we've done at the school was about 15 minutes. Uh, so it could be a 15 minute ritual. The longest ritual we've ever done ran about two hours. But that was for Yule, and that was because there was a lot of music. So, and there were also a lot of people there. So, ritual length really depends on what all is going to be involved in the ritual and how many people are actually in attendance. Because when we do our uh, prayer and energy requests, Sometimes that can take a lot longer than the actual ritual itself if there's a lot of people there who have a lot of requests. So you can estimate that traditionally it'll take about an hour. So if it starts at 5 o'clock your time, it should be over about 6 o'clock your time. So can you adjust your schedule so that you check the homework a little bit later? Is it possible that someone else will be willing to make dinner for the family that night? Or is it possible to even create the meal the night before so that it just needs a few minutes to heat up? Is it possible to get off work a little early that day? I mean, we're talking about something that you're doing maybe once or twice a month. It isn't something that you do every single night. Rituals are a very important part of your magical experience. So having people in your family who possibly may not necessarily support your choosing to 
go on a magical route may be willing to say hey you do all this stuff for this family I can you know give you your space I can respect your right and your choices even if I don't follow them so if you can get someone to maybe help you out and say look I need just an hour to myself just this time to myself if you could please give me that much respect you know look to the people who you live with and see what you can do to to get them to help you out is it a lot to ask for one hour from your families to pursue this after all you do for them also many people share computer space with other members of the family not everyone has the luxury of having their own desk, their own computer. Most families share. So you may not be able to use your computer desk as a permanent personal and sacred space. And if this is the case, since you know when the ritual is going to be, you can gather your tools the night before and make sure you have everything you need. And if you can set them up on your desk the night before and they'll be undisturbed, by all means, go ahead and do that. That makes it for one less thing you need to worry about. But if you can't have it set up the night before, then bring your tools into the room where you're going to be having your ritual. Have it in a container, like a shoebox is great, or a trinket box, and have it set there. And that way people know this is something important. Don't mess with it. And then you'll be able to have all your stuff already there and you can just set it up that way. And that, you know, will relieve a lot of the stress for that. Um, so keep it in the room where you're going to be having it and make sure people just know not to mess with it. Or you can have it in another room and if it's already all together, just set it on your desk. I open the ritual room an hour before uh, ritual is actually going to begin and of course I say don't arrive any later than 15 minutes before the actual ritual begins so you'll you have plenty of time to set up your stuff and be in the ritual room with me you don't have to be chatting with me I understand if I'm in there and I'm like hey how you doing and nobody responds to me that you probably getting yourself prepared so you know you get home you set up your space log into the chat room and now you have your tools set up are you ready to start the ritual uh, not quite yet One aspect of pre-ritual preparation that we hear a lot of, but many do not necessarily incorporate, is the idea of the pre-ritual bath. Now, many people might say, especially for those who are getting home at 4.30 and only have the 30 minutes or less before ritual, I'm not going to spend that time and draw a bath. Then there are the other people who do not have bathtubs or simply do not like baths. Uh, one thing you can do is a ritual shower. Another argument is, but I took a shower this morning, do I really need to take another one? Now, why is it that ritual baths and ritual showers are important before a ritual? What purpose do these act Activities actually accomplish and what all is actually involved in the ritual bath or shower. When we hear the words ritual bath, the images that usually pop into mind are for a bath, a long relaxing lounge and bubbles, maybe some candles, maybe some music playing, and a shower usually is considered something quick, cleansing your body, fast and efficient. A ritual bath and a ritual shower are not about physically cleansing yourself. The purpose of a ritual bath or shower is to remove negative energy from you and put you in the proper mindset before the ritual. 
Now, this can also be done simply by using sage incense or sage smudge stick and smudging yourself. However, where this is fast, simple, and a quick fix, sometimes it may not be enough. Now, the element of water is in tune with our emotions. It can be an amplifier for your emotions, and it can be soothing to them as well. So after a long day where maybe you've had a rough day at the office, maybe you got a nasty call from a bill collector, your daughter's teacher called you and said she's failing math, your sister's water just broke and is off to have her first child, you have a hot date tomorrow night, you know, all of these things are running through your mind. And with all of this built up energy, how might this affect your magical work? Taking a bath or a shower is relaxing. Allowing the water to carry some of that excess energy away from your system. Um, when you add other elements to it, you can purify and cleanse your energies to prepare you to do what magical work that you have planned. Now, for a bath, I would recommend adding salt to the water. You can use something as simple as table salt or use sea salt. However, for this type of thing, I do not suggest using fancy bath salts that are commercially made or bath beads or bubbles. Those are chemicals, and we really don't need to add those types of things into this. It's not that kind of bath. You're not, like I said, you're not getting in there to get yourself physically clean and smelling pretty. You're not in there to shave your legs. You're in there to cleanse your energy. To purify just water and salt is all you need. Now, if you feel that your energy needs a positive or protective boost, I always suggest a quarter cup to a half a cup of apple cider vinegar. I am big on the vinegar baths. This helps cleanse and balance your aura. It also helps remove negative energy and it removes those negative leeches. You know those people that you have come in contact with who just drain you. Those psychic vampire type people and they just make you feel miserable. We all come in contact with people like that and this the apple cider vinegar removes that and heals your energy. And uh, you just put these elements into the bath and you're running the water and it helps disperse all of that energy. And next, uh, you think about the type of ritual you're planning on doing. What sort of energies are you going to be working with? Now, you already have this information. You know what the ritual is that you're planning on doing. You can go to the circle classroom and read through the ritual for that evening and know ahead of time what it is that the ritual is that we're planning. If you're doing your own ritual that night, you know what your ritual is going to be. So check your correspondence charts for proper oil, stones, incense, even music that might help aid in the energies you're planning on raising. So for instance, if we are doing a ritual to help increase your psychic abilities, I know that lavender and amethyst both help aid in this. I also know that the color purple promotes strengthening your psychic abilities. So for my bath, I would light some purple candles, light some lavender incense, put some amethyst into the bath water, and once my bath is completely ready, I would drop in a few drops of lavender essential oil, and then I would soak for no less, or no more than 10 minutes. These baths, ritual baths, don't have to be a long, luxurious bath. Five to 10 minutes is all you really need. You allow yourself to relax, breathe in the scents, absorbing the energies and meditating on opening that third eye chakra. Now this also can be done in the shower. If you can close your drain and you have like a lip, if it's like a tub shower or there's space in it, um, 
as some showers have, you can close off the drain and allow the water to uh, rise a bit. If you do not have this sort of thing, I suggest going to um, the store, like a dollar store, and you can buy one of those aluminum um, turkey roasting pans. Those things fit perfectly. You put that in the bottom of the tub and you stand in it. And in the pan, you can add your salt, you can add your stones, you can add your essential oils, herbs, vinegar, whatever you need to. And as you know, the skin is the largest organ. The essential oils and the minerals and all that will absorb into the skin, through the feet, and up into your body. Or another option is to take a washcloth. If you don't have one of those uh, things, you can take a washcloth and put your stuff in the washcloth and turn it into like a little scrubber and um, create that bundle and use it as a scrubber on yourself, focusing on the energies that you're removing and the energies that you're bringing in. And now, that you finished off with your bath or shower and dried off, the next thing you question is what is it that you should be wearing? Now depending on your personal tradition you might choose to practice sky clad. However, there are times when sky clad isn't necessarily appropriate. Having ritual wear is not mandatory. However, it is a way that you can prepare yourself for what you're going to do. Our clothes that we wear from day to day also attract energy. It comes in contact with the same energy that your body has come in contact with. So it holds on to that energy. Also remember that the colors that you wear have specific energies as well. When you are doing magical work, it is good to make sure that all energies you are working with are in sync. So taking time to wear something special for your ritual work also puts you in a more relaxed and proper state of mind. So removing the quote-unquote muggle clothing, as it were, into your ritual robes is also considered a ritual unto itself. Now, I've created my own ritual robes. I also have specific jewelry I wear only for ritual work. I've created slippers for my ritual work. Now, many people like to go around barefoot, but, you know, sometimes there are times when you may need foot protection. If you're going outside in snow, you know, you don't want your toes to freeze off. So, deciding on ritual wear does not have to be extravagant. Now, if you can afford to buy a bulky medieval costume and feel comfortable with that, by all means, wear it. You can also find a simple cotton nightdress that you like that makes you feel magical. By all means, use that. It's not, you know, it doesn't have to be flowing robes. It doesn't have to look like you're about ready to go to a Stevie Nicks concert. It, it's something that you have decided is magical to you. It's what you see as your ritual wear. One thing I will mention about ritual wear is proper care and storage is important. Our ritual wear is part of our magical tools and just as you would with your athame or wand or incense, it is to be respected and cared for. Also, just as you would with any ritual tool, you should charge it with energy and consecrate it. And we can discuss that and more on ritual wear in another uh, discussion. But when you are putting on your ritual wear, don't just throw it on. You take your time and focus on each item you're putting on and what it represents to you. Feel your own transformation from your busy executive self or your housewife self or your student self into a practitioner of magic. And now you're ready to sit down and perform your ritual.
Now, before I end, please note that these are not the only ways of preparing yourself before a ritual. When you understand your different correspondences, the different uh, vibrations that certain colors, scents, stones, foods, music give off, you can incorporate all of that into your entire day. Wearing colors that promote the energy that you're going to be raising that evening during the day, even if it is just one item in the color, wearing a scent that will draw those energies to you, uh, wear or carry gems or stones that are appropriate for the energy you're planning on using that night can be very effective. If you do daily devotions, you can focus on the deities that will help you create the energy. Also, your whole day can reflect the energy you will be raising that evening. If you can find ways that are appropriate, do it. Try it. You may find that it helps. Uh, one of my favorite things, as I am a kitchen witch, is to eat foods that might be known to assist with the energy I'm planning on working with that evening. I usually will plan my menu for a special dinner around the theme of my, my ritual. But I also do start in the morning with breakfast. And throughout the day, I try to think of what the energy is that I'm going to be working with and what things I can eat that will add to it. This is why I make you create so many charts here at the school. So once you get into the correspondence of spellcrafting classes and you have all of these charts, all of these and understand these correspondence charts, you understand the colors, numbers, symbols, herbs, foods, drinks, teas, deities, the times of the day when you have this information. Why not use it to your advantage? Okay, now let me give you an example of a day of preparation for me that I would do. Now keep in mind, I am a stay-at-home mom. So I do know that what I do may not work for your own personal schedule. I'm just giving you an idea to help you come up with your own plan. So you can use my plan as a springboard if you wish. Totally up to you. Okay, so let's go back to the example I gave before on a ritual increasing psychic abilities. Things I might do to prepare during the day would be, okay, I know the color purple is a color I associate with psychic awareness. So I could wear a purple shirt or add a purple scarf to my clothes or I could even wear purple underwear. That purple color is going to help attract that psychic energy and I see it. And as we know, when we see that color, we associate it, and that's how the correspondences work. Um, I know the third eye chakra is used when working with our psychic abilities. So during the day, I would do meditations and exercises that I know help open and balance the third eye chakra. I know the number seven is associated with psychic energy. So maybe during the day, I would do things in sevens. Or I possibly would have a snack of seven apple slices or seven grapes. Speaking of foods, I know that dandelion leaves, grapes, olives, lavender, beans, cheese, eggs, tea, cloves, marigold, onion, peppermint, yarrow, cinnamon, poppy, saffron, thyme, celery, rosemary, chamomile, corn, lettuce, among other things, can help promote psychic abilities. So I can choose recipes and plan my meals using some of these items. I know amethyst is a gem associated with divination and psychic abilities. So I would wear jewelry that has that stone in it. Or I could just carry one of those, my amethyst wand or stone in my pocket. Just having that there helps attract that energy. I know that there are symbols, uh, the planetary symbols of the moon, Neptune, Pluto, symbols of the dark moon, spirals, in the docile direction. 
representations of the moon, the ocean, the tentacle, rainbow, scales, the waning crescent moon, and the wind also helps with purpose. So I can put these images in candles I'll be using, not only in the ritual, but what I do during the day. I can put the scent on uh, in a pattern, draw the pattern on my arm when I put the scent on, visualize the symbol during meditation, carve them into food that I'm going to eat, trace the pattern as I stir my tea, or how about even a snack? I can take a piece of bread and using a squeezable bottle of grape jelly, draw the pattern onto the bread. Now that I know lavender is associated with this, I could burn lavender incense during the day, wear a little bit of lavender essential oil on my wrist, or even put it in the center of my forehead at my third eye, or maybe pick some fresh lavender and bring it into the home. Then I can prepare my ritual space in advance, make sure I have everything set up. I create my special meal for my family that uses the ingredients, numbers, and symbols that I know will enhance my psychic abilities. I take time during the day to reflect and meditate on Selene and Pan and the other deities who are associated with divination and psychic abilities. I could even research psychic abilities and new forms of divination and probably set up another class simply for you guys to take based on the research I did that day. I may take my pre-ritual bath with salt and lavender oil and amethyst crystals and lavender incense and purple candles. And then I'll turn on some soothing new age music to keep my mind set, dress myself in my ritual wear. I will then sit down at my computer, turn on the chat room, and wait for all of you guys to get in there and we do the ritual. When you put your mindset into what it is you're planning on raising energy wise, you will find that not only does it add to your entire experience, it transforms the entire day into a magical day. Our magic doesn't have to be only on the Sabbaths and Esbats. Our magic doesn't have to only be practiced at our main altar. Magic can be done all day, every day. These tips and ideas don't have to be only done pre-ritual. You can incorporate these things into just about any part of your life. It is simply deciding to take the effort to do so. So to recap, have your items in advance. Make sure your tools are ready for your work and be sure that the, everything is set up before your ritual takes place. Try to give yourself time to prepare yourself for the ritual. Take a pre-ritual bath or shower to help balance your energies and use tools to help increase the energies you're going to be working with. Put on your ritual wear. During the day, incorporate the elements or theme of the ritual into what you wear, what you eat, and what you do. Even if you just take the time to do one little extra thing, you will very likely notice the difference in your magical work. If you start doing this in your everyday life, you may find your life to be a little more magical. Thank you for joining me, and merry part.